programs? So um, I've done some citizen science projects, um, worked on, um, so BGI has worked on various disease outbreaks. Um, they worked on SARS. They worked on um, uh, the, in 2011, there was a terrible outbreak of E. coli food poisoning that killed 50 people. And I, working at BGI then, we um, made all of that data public. We crowdsourced it around the world. Professor Kwan in Hong Kong, researchers in Australia, America, all over Europe, they, they used this data and found out things about the, about the disease outbreak very, like very, very quickly. And so we were trying to think of a similar project to inspire people in, in Hong Kong, not necessarily a life and death thing like uh, like a disease outbreak, but at least something relevant to Hong Kong that we could you know get interest here. So um, uh, I was one of the two people that originally uh, came up with the idea um, of the of, of the project. We helped recruit um, some people here at CUHK. We helped convince uh, BGI. Um, to let us sequence it in their Hong Kong office. Um, we've been doing, um, in, in particular, doing a lot of the outreach and education, going to schools, helping promote it on social media and Facebook and, and things like that. So I, have, I haven't done so much of the, the you know, the, the genomicists here have been doing a lot of like the genome assembly and, and, and analysis. Um, I've done a lot of the flag waving and trying to encourage people and get people involved. So yeah. I see. How did you convince BGI to accept this kind of way? So um, we wanted to do this project for for Hong Kong, you know, uh, funded in Hong Kong, sequenced in Hong Kong, and uh, uh, assembled, and you know, it's it's like a made in Hong Kong uh, project. And BGI is obviously in Shenzhen, and they're in Hong Kong. Um, they've had a very long history doing stuff with data sharing and open data. Um, and they also have um, one of the they, uh, BGI College is, is a, a part of BGI. There's, uh, they do a lot of stuff in, in education. And so science education, gen you know, genetic education is, is part of things that BGI have been promoting as well. So it was very easy to convince them. Um, it kind of uh, you know, promoted a lot of things they wanted to do. Um, so the money that we raised was going to cover the, the chemical costs, the, the, the consumables, and then BGI would offer the labor for, for free, um, pro bono, but, you know, it was, it was an easy sell for them, you know, they've, they've been very happy to see, to is see this enough, project do well. Is it the um, funding enough for this program? Is it? Is the funding enough for the program? So, um... That it, it managed to fund uh, a lot of the things we wanted to do, but it wasn't enough to, to cover everything. So we thought we would do a, a pilot, show what is possible with, with this amount of money, get some results. Um, and then with that, uh, you know, with a kind of proven track record, with, uh, you know, we made this many findings with this amount of money, then we can push for... This was, you know, this was community funded. You know, we were getting, uh, you know, a hundred quai here, a hundred quai there. You know, sm small amounts of money. We wanted the, you know, Hong Kong public to kind of own that. But now, now we have that. Now we can go to bigger funders and talk to, you know, Li Kaxing or somebody, somebody like that to see if they can give more money to to do a, you know, a, a better quality, um, kind of more final version of the genome. So. To continue this project. Yeah, it's 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 ongoing. Yeah. It'll last one more year. Or? Um, so this is another thing about genomics, um, and what one of the things we wanted to making the whole process um, transparent is to show that when you have a when you have a genome, when somebody releases a genome, it's not it's never the final project. It, it never ends. Um, the human genome is the most complete genome. The human genome project was 15 years ago. It's still not finished. And I don't know if it will ever be finished. They keep every year or two, they do another improvement, they do another version. So we want to show that 
uh, genome is, ne is never a completed thing. The technology is changing so quickly, improving all of the time. You, you know, the new things that we can do with these genomes the whole time. So um, we've made everything open. We're going to continue working on this, but we're, we're all volunteers. People can, other people can take this up and carry this on and, and, and uh, doing an emblem of uh, one place like Hong Kong. Um, we're hoping it would inspire other places that have their own emblems to, to do the same, you know, the Japanese sakura or uh, the Macau lotus flower or, or something like this, you know. We, we've produced a kind of open platform, we've made all our training materials open, so if somebody wants to do this again somewhere, somewhere else to teach, teach students, you know, the Indian tiger or something, something like this, they can, they can do this now. Do you meet any difficulties? So um, we, we made things difficult for ourselves from the very beginning in that um, we chose this species, which is, is a difficult species to study because it's a hybrid. Um, the Hong Kong bohemia shouldn't exist because it's, it's sterile. It's a, a hybrid of two completely different species that somehow managed to breed and create this sterile offspring that people have just been uh, taking cuttings and propagating artificially for 130 years. Um, the difficult thing about hybrids are their genomes are very complicated, very uh, heterogeneous, which means that um, we can't just study one, uh, one genome. We have to study what we think the parents are. And then once we've assembled the parents, then we can assemble the, um, the, the offspring, which means we don't, we we're not doing one genome, we're doing three genomes, which makes it three times more expensive. So that was quite a big, that was quite a big challenge that we had to raise a lot more money um, because of that. Um, there was a more interesting scientific question there, but then we had to work three times harder. And we didn't quite raise enough money to do the all three genomes. Um, but we had enough money, we raised about a third of the, of the total. And so with that, we managed to sequence the gene catalogue. So the, the RNA rather than the DNA of all of the, of the, three, the three species that we wanted to look at. Um, so it's not a, a full, complete genome, but uh, for that price, we could study all of the, the genes, the, what are probably the most interesting part of the of the genome um, and f that will answer most of the interesting scientific questions you know medicinal properties the the strange origins um, and then we hope that once we study that enough um, we could then apply for funding to do a kind of final or complete genome which would be a lot more expensive but that that was the that was the main difficulty that we had to overcome yeah i see so the difficulty you mentioned, any stories, insight that most touch you or make you feel sad or any different feelings? So um, we've, one of the main goals for this project is science education. It's getting, uh, communicating these things, trying to get the Hong Kong populace excited about their, about their emblem about, and about science. And we did a very good job um, promoting it in English language media. We got on the front page of South China Morning Post, we got in CNN, we got on BBC. Um, we went to the effort to make some of the videos and materials in Cantonese, but the interest in, in the local, you know, Guangdonghua and uh, Cantonese television and media in, in, in Hong Kong was, wasn't as, wasn't as, Good. Wasn't, we were a bit disappointed with the response from the from the local media. There, like we're really happy that uh, you know um, uh, Mandarin, uh, you know the mainland media have been have been more interested than a lot of the the Hong Kong media. But going into schools, the school kids are like really interested. People, uh, you know, have done lots of public talks. People are people are really interested. But for some reason, a lot of the local media um, hasn't been. Science is not something they cover much, but we have to just keep keep trying because it it's really important. It affects all of our lives. So yes, so uh, the the project is still in progress. It's still going, yeah. Yes. So what 
any result have already applied on planting and docking here right now? So it's still quite early, and I think you need to talk to the team at Chinese University who are who are doing the okay. analyzing the data now. But I think they've done quite well in um, uh, characterizing the, the the potential genes that have you know medicinal properties. The early data will help really prove the origins where the where you know Bohemia originally came from. Um, Understanding the you know the the origins um, because it is a, a sterile hybrid. One thing that we hope we might be able to get from this data is to understand why it is infertile. Um, it's quite difficult to to propagate the Hong Kong bohemia because it doesn't produce seeds. So everyone is um, is, is you know gen genetically identical, and you have to uh, take cuttings and make rootstocks, which is quite difficult. But if we can understand um, wh why exactly it, it's infertile, we might be able to actually make it fertile, make seeding bohinia, which would make it then so much more easy to propagate and cultivate. Um, it will also be useful um, if uh, there's ever any um, disease. Because they're all genetically identical, uh, Hong Kong bohinia will be very uh, susceptible to um, to, to, to an infection. So at least we ha having all of this information um, will give us a head start if there is ever any kind of um, you know, disease outbreak affecting it. So um, it hasn't affected uh, you know, the cultivation and propagation yet, but we're better prepared for, for the future and if anything goes wrong. Great.